It's okay? Because of me or because of what? No, 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 I just mean like, for some reason I have a hard time like differentiating step up and step back. Like, okay, so remember, see, as, if you think about it, a step up, you're gonna start on the floor. Yes, a step down, you're gonna start up on the box, both feet. Step, uh, yeah, a step up, you're gonna start one foot up, but you're starting from the ground, right? A step down, you're gonna start from the top, going down. It's almost like a the eccentric compared to concentric one, right? Let's try that. No, no, no. I do it like the way you said okay. it. Especially if it's assisted. That's where I have, I gotta differentiate. Yeah, no, so if it's assisted, it's really hard because, like you said, you're gonna have to lean forward a lot more. Assisted, keep it on the way up. Okay. On the, we don't really ever teach it with the leg down unless you're gonna alternate. That's the only that's time ever. Okay. Otherwise, if so you're not gonna alternate, just keep that leg up the whole time. Exactly, that's it. Um, the cue on the egg's perfect. Um, okay, so let's do this. Kiria, go ahead and perform it. I want you to coach her through it, okay? So remember, we're driving off, off that front foot. We don't want to use that back foot at all. So we're going to really use these quads. And we do that by driving off the tripod. So that's going to be the heel, pinky toe, and big toe. All right, and you're going to exhale as you step up. Good. All right, step down, nice and baby tap at the bottom. Good. Driving off right there with that front foot. Yeah. Chest out over. That's good. All right, so watch the top when she locks it. When she's at the top, look at her chest and look at her hip. Is she locking her glute or is she just locking her leg? Do you feel your glute working at all? Or do you feel your quad working? Quad, right? Okay, so exactly that. Have her fully finish the rep. That's, squeeze glute to the top. And then you don't have to even say, like, push your hips forward. You just have to say, squeeze your glute to the top. Or do you feel your, that in your butt, butt at all? Yeah, what do you feel? Quad is a good thing. I want her to feel the quad, but I want her to finish that movement because when she lets go of those hands, we're gonna have to get her lock out anyways. So I'm just pre-facing her, right? Um, it looks good. Only other thing I would say on the tripod of the foot, don't just say the tripod of the foot, you might have to show that, especially for new people. They don't know what that means, right? So pinky toe, big toe. Yeah. Exactly, but what does that mean? Just, yeah, but what I'm saying is that you might have to take your shoes off. Show them, this is what a tripod of the foot, you wouldn't want them to be like, okay, yeah, I mean, I get, I get you're pushing on these three things, but if they're doing this, they're not really doing anything, right? The reason why I want you to have a tripod on the foot is because when we're pushing up, I don't want that heel to go off the side, right? So explain, meaning like, there's a further why into it, and they might not understand why if you're not explaining what they, you don't want them to do, right? So just be aware of that part too. It looks great, yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, beautiful. Kira, you felt like that was good? Yeah, would you have said anything else? Face this way or off to the side? Good question. Either one works, depending on how much help you need. Like if somebody's really like, um, somebody's really heavy, um, somebody's super afraid of their knee, um, somebody that is much older, I would always have them too heavy, afraid of it, has less severe knee pain, just because they can pull a lot more with two hands, they can get with one, right? Or somebody has off balance issues. That's like four different things, but that's just something that came up in my head. Like there's not really a good reason or not, otherwise, I can easily have him step up one hand it, right? This would be enough for me to start that thing. It might not be enough for other people. But also, if I feel off balance, I'm putting a lot of weight here, I'm gonna lean my weight this way. So if you start seeing that, maybe it's worth changing into two hands, right? Yeah, but that's a good question. I see, Safe. I see why you asked that, because the other day we did perpendicular. You did? Okay, yeah, exactly, exactly. So same thing as the Bulgarian, like I said, right, opposite. Um, so you can definitely do both. I would, I would start with both, and I go into one. The other one that you could do, you don't have to use both these, you can also use one of these for both hands, right? That might be a lot easier for somebody that's not that tall. Because somebody that's not that tall, this is gonna be really long for them. They have to be like almost closer to here. This might be a lot easier to stay closer to with, with both hands if you're not that tall. Good. 
Um, all right, let's go step downs. You can teach her with that, or you can teach her with this, whatever you feel like doing. Uh, yeah, let's go assist. All right, so Brett, you're going to do an assisted step down. So this time you're going to start on the block. Okay. So um, have you do about shoulder width apart. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to lean back and tap the ground. So what I want you to do is keep this leg straight. Okay. And keep that knee over that going over that foot. I don't want to see a lopsidedness or anything like that. I'm just doing this focusing on tapping that toe down to the ground yeah. and then to back up, squeezing that butt on the top. All right. And then so the first five, straighten that leg out behind you. All you're doing is just tapping. There's no strength on that one. All the strength is really on this one. Just tap down to the ground, back up. Kind of like there's an egg in the top. Everything's straight. What's the reason for the straight leg? So that you don't go down. You don't put any weight on it. What? Also, you don't put any weight on it. Yes. Right, because you can't push up. You're going to bend your knee if you want to push off that leg. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right, so Brett, go ahead and try it, and I'm going to have you coach him through it. Let's go ahead and get 10 reps of everything when we try it. Okay. Yeah, 10 reps, easy. So, based on this, um, he's stepping really far back. Did we talk about a distance between this? Okay. So, the closer the distance, the closer your leg is here, the more you're going to put weight in that front leg. The further distance back, the less weight you're going to put in the front leg. He's, if he's pushing his leg back, that means he's, dumb, he's using a hip dominant movement, not a knee dominant movement, because he's pushing his hips back a lot further. So, it's almost like he's going here, trying to do an RDL, instead of here, trying to do a step up. Right? So just remember that the closer it is, the more knee dominant. The further it is, the more hip dominant. Right? Good. Keep going, Brett. Remember where the jazz ball is. Yep. Drive through the top, squeeze that butt at the top. Squeeze that butt at the top. Drive through the top, squeeze that butt at the top. 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 Squeeze that butt so two things here. You see how that thing is in his face? He can't lean forward further, right? So number one is just watching where you lean forward. He's a tall person. You need to make sure that space is clear for him. You can put that all the way to the ground or in the middle. It wouldn't bother him at all. But know that that's going to stop him from leaning forward. He could lean a lot more. Go ahead and push it to the other side and try to keep doing it. <clears throat> He's going to be able to lean a lot more forward if he if that's, that's not in his face, right? Just inherently because he doesn't want to push anything in his face. Is yet, look how close his face is to the barber, right? So now he's putting all his weight in his knee and his quad instead of putting a little bit of weight away because he's pushing his, hips, his shoulders away from his face, right? So that's something we want to make sure we do is we're setting them up for success and we're asking them to lean forward, but there's something inherently in the way they're not going to lean forward, right? It's our, it's our coach's fault. Not something I expected you to know, but it wouldn't be, if you were doing it, it wouldn't bother you. So I wouldn't have moved it. <laughs> so you think it depends on the size, right? Um, you notice the difference when you lean more forward now? Sure. Where do you feel? More? Yeah, more quad, right? So now he can lean more forward. He's going to feel his quad a lot more. He won't be able to lock out fully because of that, right? Um, so that, yeah, the difference where they step back is going to be a lot easier. And you'll find it that people that tend not to want to work hard or pain problem, they're going to be stepping on all the way back there, like, like two, three feet off, right? Because it's just going to be a lot easier. Um, okay, so let's say this is too easy. But let's say the 12 inch box is too hard. What do you, what would you do? Can you add another one of these? You can't. can't no. Like no. And think about something else outside of death. So um, outside of death. So you can have them use the box, but then the balance box? You could also do that. That's a good one, for sure. Damn it, but you thought about death. <laughs> I thought you not death. Okay, so think about it, right? Here, I'm going to my toe. Yeah. 
right? If I don't want to increase the depth, I can start teaching a lateral step down. Because if I teach a lateral step down, I can now go to my heel instead of my toe. So I'm dropping lower, right? I'm going to drop lower inherently because instead of touching my toe, my toe is extended, I'm going to touch my heel, right? So the other thing you can do is, as long as they can stay already really close to the box, is have them touch their heel to the ground. It's just a lot harder to do when you're when this is in front yeah. right that's the only reason i'm saying that but obviously this is less less right. um range of motion than this right but you're trying to build up a little bit more so that's definitely a little thing you can do to add more progress to that right you're probably gonna feel a lot more like that and i try a uh, lateral step up and see the difference yeah oh yeah it's a, it's a terminal knee extension so that's perfect try a lateral step up and tell me how it feels that's probably gonna feel the best because you're getting a lot more movement right that's a lot more load in that leg. Exactly, that's all it is, man, exactly. So yeah, something, just a couple of things that you can think about um, in terms of not having to add any, what I meant to say is just without adding any equipment. The equipment you have, how do you make it a little bit harder or a little bit more challenging? They can already do it pretty easily. Um, this is definitely one that people put way too much weight on their arms. There's no need to because it won't build up their legs. So focus on that. Um, hey, eventually I want you to start trying to let go of almost all your fingers and let's see if you can do that. Now the next step would be balance, right? That was gonna be way harder with just balance than it would be with holding on, right? So that's an unassisted and you're still at the same depth, good. All right, so let's say we already went over balance step downs, rack assisted step downs. Um, unassisted step up, what would you change in an unassisted step up? What are you looking for? Going from an assisted step up to an unassisted step up. What are you looking for? Yep, exactly. So how do you transition from one to the next? How could you do it in a month? Let's say, how can you transition from an assisted to an unassisted? And then when I'm ready, okay, then I'm going to go. You start letting go of that rack slowly. You have to start, you have to start pre-facing them. If it's around week three and start looking like they're struggling pulling on, it's probably not worth even trying an unassisted next month, right? You want to, but if you feel like they can push it that session, you're like, oh shit, like have you, I, I, would, I sometimes even ask him, hey, have you tried unassisted yet? It's like, no. Okay, why don't we start trying to let go of the rack first? And then say it's only week three, but I start trying to get him early to start feeling what it feels like to proprioceptiveness. It's going to be a lot playing into it. So you have to give him time for that, right? Another one would be just one hand instead of two, right? Another one would be keep, uh, let your hand slide down the wall. Right, so like for example, so you would be, you could be here, right? So you're still touching something, but you're not being assisted by it anymore, right? So the wall, exactly, like your hands are going wall, bent, you're keeping your elbows bent. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can transition somebody there, um, especially if they're already getting used to it. By week five, they're, they're starting to get bored and they, you wanna make sure they're not doing it like wrong because if they're, not, they're doing it wrong, they're not feeling anything. That's why I always ask him, were you feeling your quad hips? Okay, how hard was that? Okay, no, well, I mean, I can, if I did 10 reps of these right, I'm gonna feel my, my quad a lot, right? And that's just me already training. I can't imagine you not having trained being that easy, right? So definitely something to be aware of. If somebody doesn't feel it somewhere, something's missing. You gotta, it's up to you to figure out what's missing there. And if you can't figure it out, that's fine. Just ask for help. Um, okay, so, yep. So we go from assisted to unassisted. The knee needs to be forward, the hip or shoulder needs to be forward. Um, unassisted step down, the same thing. You can have him slide down and up, like I said. Um, nothing changes. Let's go into pistol squat. Who wants to teach that one? Knowing what's coming, I'm like, go ahead. You can go high if you want, it doesn't have to be this low. I'm not worried about the knee. Okay, okay. <laughs> What's up? That's, um, you can use that one for sure. Um, you can use a PVC, that's fine. You can use a PVC, you can use a rack. You can use whatever you like to use for sure. There's so, as I'm saying, it's not a one option thing. You have plenty of things you can choose from, right? Yeah. Alright, so we'll do a pistol squat to the high box. Alright, so we have barbell back squat. Face you so you can see. So we got our heels against the box. 
feet on the over here, nice and square feet, just flex out the front of What we're going to do, we're going to straighten that front leg, nice flex in the quads, toe point up on the sky. And we're going to go down and we're going to sit on that box. We're going to do like a full sit. What we're going to do here, we're going to keep our core tight, our chest is leaning forward, shoulder blades are pulled back, we're down a little bit. We're going to go down, nice full sit. And we're going to go right back up. We're really driving off that tripod of that, that leg right here. So our big toe, pinky toe, and our heels. Okay. And then keeping that leg stiff the whole time. Right back up. This is all on that knee, on, or all on the quad. We want to keep the knee nice and straight. We don't want to cave in it. Are the hips any better? Perfect. Um, I would also coach on anybody new trying this move to make sure you over coach lean forward when you're at the bottom. Because a lot of people start when, when they get to the bottom, they start doing this, just from experience. Yeah, they start yeah, this yeah. way and then they go here yeah. and they try to pull, come up like a squat, like this. There's no chance. You gotta lean forward the bottom too, coming up. So don't lose your core at the bottom. Don't lose your core at the bottom and keep yourself leaning even more. You might have to even lean further forward to get back up because you have to use momentum at that point. Right? All right, Kira, let's go ahead and try it. Let me see Brett coach you through it. <laughs> Dude, you gotta, you gotta stretch out, man. You gotta warm up. <laughs> right? This guy always wants me to, uh, he's like, can you do this? I'm like, let me try. And I'm like, oh, I should have warmed up. Right? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so feet shoulder width apart, heels against the box. Let's go right the PVC pipes out in front of us. That's good. So now we're gonna bounce on one leg. All right. We're gonna have that leg nice and flex and straight. Toe point forward, good. We're gonna sink our hips down to the box while we're leaning forward. That's good. We're going to keep our core tight at the bottom. Don't lean back like you just did. Try to stand forward. And we're going to drive back up off that toe, off the tripod. What's the reason you think she's leaning back, though? That? Tight hips or tight, tight angles? I don't know. You tell me. I would say. How would you know? I would say hips. You would think hips? I would say. I would think hips. I mean, why do you say hips? Just tell me why. I feel like that's just like a natural response to your body when you have tight hips. Okay. Um, Kiri, go ahead and step out and do a squat for me. Squat. Okay. Um, go you do a rack squat for me. Yeah, so you're going to hold on to the rack and go all the way down. Okay, so you see how her shins are not, are, are so, so uh, straight up? That's from her ankle. The way I'll prove it to you is grab a ramp. Grab a ramp real quick. Go grab it. And let's try it again. And if it's not from her ankle, then it's from her hips. I don't know the answer. We'll find out. <laughs> Does that hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. Oh, okay. No, I should have just said ankle because we know you. No, it's an ankle. That, that's, that's, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's easy for me to figure out if it's the hip by using this. I don't know if it's the ankle or hip yet. We'll find out if this helps. If this helps, then it's the ankle, right? If it doesn't, it's probably the hip. But this is my way of canceling that out. Yeah, okay. All right, try it again. Feet shoulder apart. There you go, heels against the box, good. So balance on the leg. Flex that leg out, toe up, good. We're gonna have our chest leaning forward. We're gonna sink our hips back onto that box. We're gonna keep our core tight. We're gonna try not to lose our core. That's good. And now back up right off that track yeah. of the foot. Ankles. So I think that's okay. Right. I think it's the ankles too. For most, most people, I think it's the ankles, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the ankles. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? So, one thing for sure to note is that the PVCs, a lot of people won't feel stable. They won't feel stable, very stable. Um, so it might be worth on anybody that is going to try this movement that you don't are not sure their history, are maybe a little bit overweight, are older, and they're you, I might I could do the rack. The problem is the rack's going to get in my way because I, both feet are going to be forward. I would have I would have want at least have one staple. So what I would do is I would have one PVC and one rack. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because at least that one is not going to fall over. These two here, if I'm shaking all over the place, I don't know what to do. At least one I can lean forward and pull it to one side, right? Yeah, that's just a thing to think about. Um, good cueing on that. Um, How do you feel doing it? Is it hard for you to do that? It's hard, yeah. What's the big difference between on the floor versus with the step? Did you notice the difference or not really? I think I have more control of my ankle, of where my leg is. With the step or without the step? With the step, right? Yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, another thing that you'll see on these is, and this is another way you have to know if they have tight ankles without knowing the prior history, is if they go here. 
You see how I picked up my heel? That immediately means that, oh shit, I can't hold this knee position anymore, so I'm gonna pick up your heel. And I saw her picking up her heel a little bit. Um, so it's just knowing, and it's gonna put a lot of load in the knee if they do that. Not bad, it's just knowing that it's going to, right? Um, let me think. Yeah, that's good. With that movement, what would like signs of it being like hips instead of ankle? Like what would that be? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like so, if, say that it wasn't the ankle. Oh, just tight sorry, hips. What so that, like, normally, I know, I know tight hips would look like this. Somebody that's doing this kind of squat. Like a yes, okay. that's really, really tight hips, usually. But if she can get to this point, like she can get to this point, which is pretty good, because look at my hip, it's already like almost closed up, right? So it's just my ankles because they're not going forward anymore, right? Um, uh, most people that stay that have tight hips probably have tight ankles. I don't really think they have tight hips, yes. I noticed that from experience for the past couple of years. I just seen like, oh, let me tell you, a heel elevated. Well, you can get all of a sudden all the way down. So it's not from your hips, but they're used to it.